Total Screen proudly presents their official podcast, On Screen, with your hosts, Tyson Gifford and William Rorig. Everybody and welcome to On Screen, the official podcast of the Total Screen. My name is Tyson. My name is Will. And today, lo and behold, it happened. A Nintendo Direct, a partner showcase, which means we finally got our topic for the week. <laughs> we mentioned <laughs> yeah. last week that we were waiting for some something specific and hoping that that would be our topic for next week's podcast. It is. We have our partner Direct to talk about. We also have some other trailers that have come out in the past week to talk about. And we got a On the Horizon segment to go over as well with some stuff coming up in the next week or so. So let's get started with that, with our On the Horizon segment. On the Horizon On the Horizon on the Horizon is, of course, where we talk about what's coming up in the next week or so. And we're starting with The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live. This is the spinoff with Rick and Michonne that comes out on Sunday, February 25th on AMC. So I think we've brought this up a few times when there's been trailers for it and stuff, and we've decided not to cover it because there's just not much that you or I can really say about it because we both stopped watching The Walking Dead ages ago. Yeah, lost track of it. But that's coming on Sunday, February 25th to AMC. Then on Tuesday, February 27th, Shogun is coming to FX and Hulu. This is a remake of the classic miniseries based on the novel of the same name. And this one looks like it's avoiding the whole white savior aspect of the original miniseries and kind of focusing more in on actually nailing the cultural milestones of Japan in that era. Fantastic cast, mostly Japanese cast and crew, apparently. I mean, it looks good. I've been hearing a lot of comparisons to Game of Thrones. People mm. saying it's just like it's on that scale, meaning like it's just really richly written and, and deep with like gorgeous visuals and good performances all around. It's just like a triple A show. I'm excited for it though. So like I've heard lots of good things about oh, it. Oh, it looks, it looks fantastic. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which a lot of people have been waiting for, a lot of people not uh, named Tyson, are coming yeah. out on Thursday, February 29th to <laughs> PS5. I can't anything, wait. Anything to say there? I can't wait, but I, I still need to, like, I, I need to, like, play through Final Fantasy Remake. But there, there's a bundle that you get both games for PS5, so I'm probably going to pick that up. Yep, you can get that on Thursday, February 29th on the PS5. Spaceman, this is the new Adam Sandler Netflix movie that's got like a more serious tone to it. It's got somebody major playing the alien. I think it's Paul Dano, right? Playing the alien Oh, yeah, creature. yeah, it's Paul Dano. Yeah. And that is coming on Friday, March 1st on Netflix. And then the big release of the week, Dune Part 2, coming to movie theaters also on Friday, March 1st. Yeah, I'm excited for that. I haven't been to the movies in a while. I used to have a movie subscription. I paid monthly, and I would just go to movies constantly. With the move, I, I moved recently. We've mentioned it briefly on the, on the podcast. With all of that, I just didn't have time, and so we canceled our subscriptions and stuff. And but Dune Part Two is something I gotta see in theaters. Oh yeah, absolutely. I'm so sad because I got to watch the first one because Warner Brothers was doing the whole day and date on Max and theaters that that year. That's obviously not going to be a thing with this one. Yeah. So it's like either go find a way, you know, get to a theater or wait for it to come out. And, yeah. This and, is this know, is a big so theater one for me. I saw the last yeah. one theater. Like, I'm even considering IMAX, but it's like, God, uh, IMAX is so expensive. I, I, I checked I checked the prices for a matinee IMAX showing of Dune Part 2, and it was like $25. Oof. <laughs> I just don't know if I'm willing to do that. But I'm definitely going to see it in theaters. I'm excited for it. And that is it for our On the Horizon segment. And that leaves our last segment on beat. On 
This is our new segment, and we're going to be starting things off with some trailers and then going into the Nintendo Direct Partner Showcase. Starting with the trailers, we got a new trailer for The Sympathizer. This is a new HBO slash Max series that's got uh, Robert Downey Jr. in it. It's like the big name in it, playing multiple roles, but he's not the main character. It's focusing on a, a guy who's from North Vietnam who infiltrates the United States, and it's kind of like the, the show The Americans, where that was about like Russian agents infiltrating the United States. Yeah. But this is about a, a somebody from North Vietnam. Yeah, and, it looks uh, interesting. Yeah, it's like really fascinating looking thing. I'm betting it's got fantastic performances. Robert Downey Jr. is heavily involved in it. Not just as he in it, but I think he's also producing it, and he's heavily attached, and I think it's going to probably end up being a really good series. So I'm looking forward to that one. We got the trailer today for Borderlands. Yeah. Uh, which uh, is a uh, uh, poor man's guard Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. I was gonna say like I I, I haven't played a Borderlands game, but it it was like my impression was like this is trying really hard to be Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, Apparently, this is Eli Roth directed this. Oh really? And and he I guess came off the project at some point, but he finished principal photography, which means it's his name attached to the movie. But now there are um there's somebody else that was involved in like a bunch of reshoots or re edits and stuff like that. So. It sounds like it might be a little bit of a mess. <laughs> yeah. Based probably. on that. But they're definitely going for the Guardians of the Galaxy vibe with the trailer. Yes. Oh yeah. Very shamelessly too. Yeah. You know, down to like the you know, like the, the classic Down to the thing. needle drops yeah. and yeah. Yeah, the needle drops and stuff, yeah. Next up we finally got a trailer for X Men ninety seven, which picks up seemingly immediately where the X Men cartoon ended. Yes. They hammered that home by like, you know, recapping the ending of the uh, the series at the beginning of the trailer. So it's kind of like, yeah, yeah, it's a direct continuation of what was happening there. I loved that series as a kid. I haven't watched it since. I need to kind of go back and maybe watch some highlights. Maybe there's somebody that's done like a compilation of the best scenes, and I'll just do that or something just to remind myself, and then jump into X Men '97, which I'm excited for. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited to have a comeback. I don't know if it's still going to be something that holds my interest like it did when I was a kid. I, I just don't know. I have to come to see how that is. But there's some cool stuff in the in the trailer. They got back almost all of the original voice actors, I believe. And yeah, there's some cool stuff, like Gambit charging up Wolverine's claws. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely some cool stuff. And uh, apparently Magneto owns the X-Men now. That's going to be, uh, we'll see how that plays out. That's going to be interesting. Yeah, uh, interesting cartoon project there. So yeah, we also got this week a new trailer for Invincible. This is for part two of season two, which we talked about part one of season two. You were not too fond of it. You really did not like the way it ended off. It just seemed like disconnected and things didn't really come together. This is yeah, the rest of that like season. Disjointed, you know, like... It's like stuff happened in every episode, but it was like different stuff. Um, yeah, but this is the part of the season where apparently things should come together. Yes. Hopefully, yeah, I'll, I should uh, say. Ho hopefully, hopefully it does. Yeah, I mean, it looks good. Yeah, it's it like Invincible. We'll have to see how it all comes together. But yeah, looking forward to seeing a bunch of more Viltrumite story stuff. And then lastly, before we get to the Nintendo Direct, we got a new trailer for Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth Tree. This is the first trailer, the first reveal of this DLC that's been highly anticipated. It's pretty pricey, too. It's like a $40 DLC. It's more like a full expansion than a DLC, I guess. But uh, I do not play Elden Ring. I am not a Soulsborne player. Oh, you, Lord. on the other hand, are. So this, tell me what this means to you. Uh, this means everything to me. This is this is life. This is love. Instead this is of like, live, live, love, uh, uh, laugh, li live, laugh, love, or something, you're like, you're like, live, laugh, poison swamp. Yes, exactly. <laughs> no, like, like this looks fantastic. It looks like it's going to kick my ass all over again, which is great because that's what I want. The, the one character, yes, the one character there looks like Millennia 2.0, <laughs> and anybody who knows like Elden Ring knows like that boss uh, is an incredibly difficult boss. So it looks like this is going to be like that, but like harder. I don't know. I'm, I'm just excited. Uh, I'm I'm glad they finally showed off the trailer. It's going to be pretty big. It's forty dollar paid DLC. They said there's going to be like over there's going to be ten plus new bosses, eight new weapon types, 
an area like larger than like one of the like the main one of the main areas in the base game. So it's it's gonna be a lot of content, and yeah, I'm I'm excited. It's launching in June. Okay, well let's then talk about Nintendo because Nintendo yes. put out a direct, a partner showcase direct. So what we would call maybe a lesser direct, <laughs> but they yeah. put out a direct, and it's been a while. People are starved for it. People are excited for it, and then it turned out to be a partner showcase. They're a little demand. But there's still some good stuff here. And in typical recent Nintendo Direct fashion, it just was like game after game after game in rapid succession. And there's some interesting narratives to draw Um, from some of the stuff we saw. Yeah, unlike uh, the full Directs that they have... There was no host for this direct. There was only like the narrator. Like it was like very much like get into the games. Yeah. And, you know, and then, and then like the English narrator, like saying a few things between games, but you know, it's very much, yeah, rapid fire game, 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 game. Yeah. Dropping a few puns and a few flavor words. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. The, the, uh, but like, yeah, the, there was no host for this direct like we have for the, the main directs. To start off, I, th- I thought it was interesting that they opened with the Microsoft games, or well, one Microsoft game actually. Yeah, I I thought I thought it was interesting they opened with Grounded as the opener because yeah, that was that's a game that was developed by Obsidian. It was the first game developed by Obsidian after Microsoft bought them, and it was uh, Xbox One, I believe Xbox One, and Xbox Series X exclusive up until now, obviously. Yeah. It's a multiplayer, like, survival game, like, sort of, like, based on, like, uh, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, <laughs> because you are playing as kids, shrunken down, and, like, trying to survive in, like, a suburban backyard, which, literally the plot of Honey, uh, I, Honey Shrunk I Shrunk the, the, the Kids. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, yeah. <laughs> which, yeah, which so... means the next ground of game will be Honey, I Blew Up the Baby. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. I don't know. It's not my thing, because, like, I'm not into multiplayer survival games, but, I mean, it's cool. I do think it's interesting that this is the game they chose to open with. Like, this is Nintendo's partnership with Microsoft, and I think they're, like, really highlighting that here. Yeah, that, well, that's the thing. That's what the interesting thing about Grounded and Pentiment in, in this Direct, is that we knew this was coming. Like, M- Microsoft released a statement saying that they had, like, four games coming. Articles were coming out where they knew exactly what games were coming and they announced them all. And we got to see two of these for the Nintendo Switch. Uh, Grounded and Pentiment, I don't think really there's much to say about either it was of them. Interesting, uh, games that have already been out, you know? It's interesting to me, though, that Pentiment was, like, only in a sizzle reel. Yeah, and that's and that, uh, that's odd because that comes out tomorrow. Yes, it does. Well, tomorrow actually, from when we film this. By the time this podcast is up, it'll already be out. And by, by the way, Pentiment is also by Obsidian. Yeah. To me, Pentiment looks like the the more interesting of the two games. Like I, I've I've definitely like played Pentiment. I don't, I don't really have an interest in Grounded. Mm-hmm. What's interesting though is that of the kind of four games that were heavily rumored and you know cited for that would be coming to third party platforms, the one that everybody was most excited about, the one that everybody was talking about for Switch, and the other one that was the second biggest game, neither of those two are coming to Switch. And it was just announced that those are coming to the PS5 today as yeah. well. Yeah, Hi-Fi Rush and Sea of Thieves are yeah. Yeah, going to the PS5, not the Switch. There are rumors that those games will end up on the Switch's successor. Yeah, I it's just... kind of weird because Hi-Fi Rush was so heavily rumored for Switch. Yes, like, it before was. Before they even heard about the four, there, that there were going to be four games or anything, it was just, oh, Hi-Fi Rush is being made for Switch. I, th- I and, think, I, I think and it's And Switch because... in particular, like they weren't saying for Switch and PS5. Like I... the rumors that first were coming out were talking about it for Switch. I think it's just like a technology thing. I It's a rhythm action game. I think they just want that game running at 60 FPS. I don't think they can they can achieve 60 FPS on the current gen Switch, so they're holding it back. Yeah, I mean the thing that makes that obvious too is that um, both Grounded and Pentiment, besides coming to the Switch, were also later not in the direct, but later announced to be coming for PS4 and PS5. Yeah, but, but Hi-Fi Rush and Sea of Thieves are both only coming to PS5. Well, besides the platforms they're already on. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> besides, yeah, they're already on PC and Xbox, obviously. Yeah. But yeah, it's an interesting beginning. 
to the big partnership between Nintendo and Microsoft. We do know that Nintendo does have a deal with Microsoft in place to bring Call of Duty to Nintendo platforms for the next 10 years. You will note that the, the wording on that announcement was specifically Nintendo platforms. Like, both parties, like, avoided mentioning Switch specifically in the yeah. announcement. <laughs> I mean, it's almost kind of stupid. They should have immediately yeah. released some of the old Call of Duty games. Like, the PS3 generation. Yeah. You know, Call yeah. of Duty games. They could have re- released ports of those on Switch that ran at like a much higher frame rate than what PS3 was capable of. You know, they could have done that and and made money hand over fist with almost no effort. Right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And that goes less to the Microsoft thing and more to just how stupid Activision was with the, those franchises and with uh, Switch development. You know. Oh yeah, absolutely. That Leads wasn't us... all we had with the Microsoft yeah. news. I got because... I got kind of trolled with this because. I saw the Rare logo. I thought, I, I genuinely thought they were going to announce a Switch port of Rare Replay. That's not what happened. <laughs> that would have probably been better. Yeah, it probably would have. It's funny because Rare logo pops up and then you see uh, Snake Red on Roll. Yeah, and, and as you're seeing Snake Rattle Roll, you're hearing Killer Instinct music. So you're like, okay, this isn't just right. Snake Rattle and Roll. Right, yeah. It's something exactly. more than that. And what we, what was announced was that there are a bunch of rare games and are coming to Nintendo Switch Online. Yeah. And it's a sh- 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 shadow drop because they all came they're, out. Today. They're all now. Yeah. You can play them right now. And the games <laughs> that came out are Snake Rattle and Roll, RC Croam, Battletoads in Battle Maniacs, Killer Instinct, the SNES version, yeah. and Blast Corps for the Nintendo Switch Online expansion pass. Yeah. Well, the N64 Killer Instinct is called Killer Instinct Gold, so that's no, how you know but the no, There is also the arcade one. That's... Uh, yeah, but there's fuck, no... Fuck the there, SNES there, there's one. There's no like, S- there's, there's no Nintendo Switch Online arcade, so... Well, obviously, but, you know, like, yeah. if you're gonna... I just... <laughs> it's gonna be the SNES something one. Something kind of annoys me. One thing that kind of annoys me about the Nintendo strategy with, like, the Nintendo Switch online is that they'll put out all these games and they're like oh here's like a version of street fighter 2 or blah blah blah. it's like yeah it's the fucking old ass console version that was already super inferior to the arcade version that was out that we're not giving you and it's like yeah 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 there's no yeah they haven't done that but it's interesting because back on the wii they did do like virtual console arcade they only put five games out on that well i mean even if they they don't do that like that's why that's what they they never did like an arcade section of virtual console sense. Yeah, but even besides that, it's the whole thing is like you were saying that you thought that they were doing the Rare Replay um, Yeah, I didn't know that this was going to be a Nintendo Switch and Online. And like, I, like I said, that would have been better. Yeah. Because you would have had better versions of more games. Right. <laughs> yeah, I did know that, that yeah, I didn't realize immediately this was going to be a Nintendo Switch Online announcement. But it was surprised, yeah, we're not getting arcade versions of anything. <laughs> but you know what? In Japan, they didn't announce any of these games coming to Nintendo Switch Online. They announced only a single game, a Game Boy Advance game, coming to the Nintendo Switch Online expansion pass. That was the only game they announced coming to Nintendo Switch Online. And I would take it over every single one of these combined. And that is Mother 3. Yeah. Which is now <laughs> going to be coming out in Japan, or is now out in Japan. On Nintendo Switch Online yeah, expansion. Yeah, ha ha, stuff it, Japan. We've got Blast Core. Ha ha ha. Yeah. You thought you got so one off much over us. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I know. Pain. It's the eternal suffering of being a Nintendo fan. Especially you mentioned like something before we started the podcast that Nintendo just decided to not only do that, but to rub a little salt in the wound for the West as well. Yeah, they released the uh, Earth, Earthbound Beginnings icons on Nintendo Switch Online membership that you could go and redeem right now. To be fair, the, the they're also releasing the icons in Japan, but it's kind of like, it, it just feels like... A slap in the face? The Nintendo of America account announced it. And yeah, I know, people. I I know. Like, yes, there is a fantastic, absolutely fantastic fan translation of this game out. You can go play it today. I know, but I would still just love to see an official release, English release of this game at some point in my life, regardless yeah. But, yeah, I mean, that's where I'm at with this. I, it's just, if they're not going to do it for Nintendo Switch Online, they're probably never going to do it, let's face it. Yeah, 
But that is it for that section and our Microsoft discussion. We're moving past that part now, but we're still on the Nintendo Direct. Unicorn Overlord was shown again. Not a lot new. We already kind of knew most about this game. We've already gotten, like, I think two trailers for this game. And yeah, we had a it's long a, explanation video, too, that explained it's a, it's a lot a of stra- details. It's a strategy RPG by Vanillaware, which uh, we haven't seen Vanillaware in a while. But you could definitely tell their distinctive style. It's published by Atlas. Looks good to me. The news here, the reason why we're bringing it up, is that there's a demo out now. Yes. So, go and grab that. I plan on grabbing it as well. I'm excited to see this game. I'm I'm not sold on the game yet. I love Vanillaware. I'm kind of like, uh, I don't know if I'm in the right mood for this kind of game or something, but I'm glad there's a demo, because I'm definitely going to check that out. Next, Next up, yeah. we got Monster Hunter Stories, which is coming, I believe it's also coming to PS5. Yes, but, it's a PC PS5 and Switch. Yeah, we got Monster Hunter Stories 2 on the this Switch, is a, so now yeah. we're getting Monster Hunter Stories 1. This is a remaster of a 3DS game, uh, which you know, don't see too many 3DS to Switch ports, you know? like We've been getting more of them. Yeah, we, we're, we're in that more era. Them. More yeah. on that later. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this, uh, like I said, this is emblematic of where we, we are in the Switch's lifespan, that we're getting stuff like this. But, I mean, it, it's cool to have this, especially now that, you know, because they Monster Hunter Stories 2 was made as a Switch game, so now you can experience both games on the same console. I always love that. Yeah, I mean, that's inter- I'm interested in checking it out. If it can be on the system, it should be on the system. Yes. Next up, speaking of remakes, Disney Epic Mickey Rebrushed. I gotta be honest, I was not expecting Epic Mickey to come back. Yeah. Especially since it was a game pu- d- Warren published. Specter. Yeah, Warren Specter. It was published by Disney Interactive, which is no longer a thing, thanks to Bob Iger, who just like, uh, this month, like, decided what people like video games, we should be in that business. It's like, really? Really, Bob? I think it's being published by THQ Nordic. Yes. Which is also yeah, kind of weird. Uh, they, they must have licensed the rights from Disney. Yeah. Yeah. It, they said a remake too when they announced it. So it, it, yeah, it's a, it's a remake. I believe the original one. The original had some issues. Early, I believe it had like some motion control stuff in there that's probably going to have to be reworked for this. I don't know. There was also, it had a few issues. There were some performance problems with the game and they were talking about lovingly remade. So yeah, I'm expecting they're actually like really trying to make it work, like make Warren Spector's original vision work. Yeah. With yeah. this version of it. Ho- so. Hopefully they succeed with that. Yeah, and that is that got a release date of 2024. The vague release date of 2024. Yes, gotta love vague uh, release dates that don't even give a time frame except for the year. The next thing on this list here drives me a a little bit crazy. It's nothing new though. It's it's, it's Atlas. Vengeance. It's Atlas pulling an Atlas. They they always do this. They always do this. Instead of releasing like DLC for a game or something, they might do that too, but then they'll release a version of the game with like DLC basically, but added into of the game, and you have to buy the whole game. Yeah, again. yeah, yeah. I already whole bought game. Shin Megami Tensei Five. I already beat Shin yeah, Megami already... Tensei Five. I'm not going back. Yeah, yeah. You do this with Persona. Like if you bought Persona Three, oh, now there's P- Persona Fest. You know, yeah. oh, you buy Persona Four. Oh, now there's Persona Four Golden. You buy yeah. Persona Five. Oh, now there's Persona Five Royal. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you got Shin Megami Tensei Four on the 3DS. Great. Now there's Shin Megami Tensei Four Apocalypse. Yep. I guess the big news with this, although we are talking about Nintendo Direct, is like, yes, this was on Switch. The original Shin Megami Tensei Five was a Switch exclusive. This one's going multi-platform. Yes. So I guess, like, if, if you're on PlayStation or you're on Xbox, you get to buy a complete version of Shin Megami Tensei Five for the first time. You don't have to double dip like Switch owners. Yeah, I'm not going to. I I got enough out of Shin Megami Tensei Five. I thought it was okay. I had a lot of things I didn't like about it, and I don't have enough interest to dive back in. So that's it for me. Shin Megami yeah. Tensei Five was enough. Next up, we got a trailer for Gundam Breaker 4, and I've never really had experience with the Gundam Breaker franchise. What made this kind of interesting to me is I like the look of the game, and I like that there's 250 base units, and it's kind of based on the models that people would buy rather than one of the shows. Oh, interesting. And okay. it's the idea is that you go in combat and you attack the other Gundams that you come across, and you break off pieces, and you take those pieces, and 
and then you can rebuild your Gundam using different pieces. And it's playing on the idea of what people would do with Gundam model kits, where they would buy like multiple model kits and mix and match them and mm-hmm. kind of make their own Gundams. And that's kind of what this is. It's like a mix and match Gundam game. Interesting. And you okay. can you can play using the thing. You can fight. It's got it's a pretty simple gameplay loop. You fight Gundams. You knock pieces off of Gundams. You add those pieces to your catalog of pieces, and you use those to build more Gundams or, or rebuild your Gundam. And like I said, there's 250 models that they're using here. That's not 250 pieces. That's 250 full Gundam models that all have multiple pieces that you can break off and then use. There's also like a photo mode to to kind of set it up because I mean that's what this is really based on is like people that would do this with the model kits and and build their own little custom Gundam models. So the idea of having like a photo mode is like integral because that's part of like sharing your creation. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, it interests me a little bit. I'm not sure I'm gonna get this game. It's another vague 2024 release date, but I just the gameplay loop is a little bit interesting to me. It might feed into my addictions. <laughs> Next up, we got Super Monkey Ball Banana Rumble. This is a new Super Monkey Ball game. We got a collection not too long ago, like last year, right? Yeah, we, we got the Super Monkey Ball collection, and now this is a new Super Monkey Ball game. It's coming out on June 25th. 200 courses, 16 player multiplayer. Are you a Super Monkey Ball head? Uh, I played the original Super Monkey Ball on GameCube. It is a really fun game. At least in its original incarnation, it's very much an, an arcade game, which, you know, is, is fine. It's hard. It's a very hard game because, like, some of those courses get extremely tricky and devious. Especially uh, the poisonous fast. swamps. Yeah, yeah, the poisonous swamps. I haven't played, really played anything outside, like, the first game, so I can't really say. I know, like, people have, like, different opinions. I always hear, like, uh, when people talk, I always hear, like, glowing impressions of, like, the first two, and then the further into the franchise, like, the impressions get more mixed. It's like Katamari has the same kind of thing, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'll check it out. Why not? Speaking of new sequels to long thought dead franchises, World of Goo 2. World of Goo was was a launch game for the Nintendo Wii WiiWare. So it didn't come out when the Wii first launched, but when Nintendo launched WiiWare, this was the the big launch game for that. Nintendo's first foray into a digital game publishing back when, uh, the whole concept of just, like, having a digital game store on your console and selling games that were purpose-made, like, was, like, a new concept. You know, Microsoft had just introduced Xbox Live Arcade not long before that. And so, yeah, this is kind of like, you know, like a, a pioneering, like, game. It's a really a awesome puzzle game. Yeah. With, like, a great style. It's very, like, Tim Burton-esque style to it That that's really fun. It's got, like, a narrative to it that's kind of weird and funny and um and just kind of cool. And the developers of this game, they've, they've really stuck to that aesthetic. Not, like, they, they haven't made another World of Goo game, but they've made, like, what was that, Little Inferno game and these other games that are... Are like completely different types of games but like with the same aesthetic the same like style the same presentation and, and like sound style and music style and this is it's I always enjoyed that style if nothing else you know but of those games World of Goo was the one that was actually like a really fun game on top of that it's kind of like a bridge builder game you, you're just adding these kind of goo pieces and when you add them they're connecting to the other goo pieces that are there and you're trying to maintain structural integrity to kind of get goo goose from one side of a cavern to another or to get them to go up into a pipe or, you know, and it's just about how you can best engineer this outcome is what World of Goo is and it's just a really fun game that's like that and it was a huge deal for WiiWare because it was like it was the main WiiWare game when the WiiWare launched. It was the game that was being like heavily promoted. It's like this is the reason to be interested in WiiWare and I loved the game when it came out. I loved Little Inferno. It was That was the first game I beat on Wii U was Little Inferno. Uh, World of Goo was my first WiiWare game and I absolutely loved it. And I ended up getting it on mobile too and never playing it on that. Now World of Goo 2 is like, it, you're getting all that aesthetic that the developer has carried through all of their projects, but you're getting a return to World of Goo which was the one that had the best gameplay by far of all of their games. And it looks like they're adding a lot more styles. Like They're kind of going the Pikmin approach of like, you know, now they're 
there's different types of goo. Like, you know, these are, these goo act differently. So you have to take that into account when you're building stuff with them and how you use them is going to be different. And so it's going to make it like a much deeper game. And that's exciting. But World of Goo 2 was already announced. This isn't like a new announcement. The thing that's worth noting here is that it was announced that this is now going to be a Switch console exclusive. So that means it's probably still coming to PC. It's probably still coming to smartphones. But it's going to be exclusive to the Switch when it comes to like an actual console version. Yeah, which is, it, it's good uh, for me. Like I haven't played it. I think uh, people who played it enjoy it. For me, it's it's good because like this is why like I hate I hate Apple Arcade as a concept. <laughs> uh, not not because like I hate Apple or I hate like phone games, but I hate like their whole thing is. They sign games to be exclusive to the service, and you cannot get Apple Arcade games outside of that subscription. There's no option to buy them separately. They force you to subscribe. And then so when a delisting like this happens on Apple Arcade, the, the game's just gone. It's gone forever. There was, a, there was a Platinum Games mobile game that's now gone forever because it was on Apple Arcade, and they de- delisted it. There was no opportunity for anybody to own it or save it. And so, like, having Game Freak come back and bring this game to Switch, at least now, like, it, you know, like, it's available again and it can be preserved. World of Crew 2 was never not available. I mean, it's it's new. It's not out yet yeah. on anything. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. But I know what you mean yeah. <laughs> in your general concept of it. But World of Crew 2 is, I'm excited for, I was a big fan of the first one, and yeah, that's coming on May 23rd. Console exclusive. Yeah. Console exclusive, yeah. Next up, we have Fantasy Life I, The Girl Who Stills Time, which looks like they took the concept of Fantasy life and added in a lot of Animal Crossing. (laughs) Uh, It's interesting to me because, yeah, I did get Animal Crossing vibes for this. It's interesting to me because this is as far as I know, unless I missed something, this is level 5's First big return to the Western market, you know, since they, they left it a while ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't believe anything else came out from Level 5. I know, like, a bunch of games were announced at the rec, like, a while back. Yeah, I this is, this the is one of the ones of those, that was announced with that, yeah. I think this is the first of them to, like, have a release date and to this be coming is, out. This is going to be coming out on October 10th. Yeah. Next up, we got another sh- 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 Shadow Drop, and this one from the makers of Sonic Mania. This is a game that a lot of people have been excited for. It's a kind of a return turn to N64 slash Dreamcast era 3D platformers. Yeah. And oh, yeah, which Penny's I'm excited big about. breakaway. I'm excited because I, 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 I love N64 Dreamcast era platformers. So, yeah, that that's me. No, it's and it's out now. Right. Yeah, looks good. That have much more to say about that. Then we got a uh, game called Pepper Grinder, which I guess was shown and had a demo put out on like a recent Steam event. Oh, did it? So I oh, guess I this has already that. been shown, but this game Pepper Grinder is showing. It's on Switch. It's coming March 28th, and the demo is out now. This is another one that's out now. You got the demo out at least, and it looks really cool because you can like grind through things. Like you have like this drill. You have this character, and you have this drill attachment or something, and you can like jump at something and then use your trajectory of your jump and then drill through objects and pass through them. And it just looks really cool. Like, I, I want to try that demo uh, and see how that feels. But it, it looks really cool. The enemy design looks really cool. That art style is like a really interesting version of like pixel art that just looks really cool. Like really huge, large uh, pixel graphics that are kind of more detailed, more like in the, like 32-bit range pixels rather than going for the 16 or 8-bit. It looks really cool. I can't say that many more ways. And we got yet another sh-sh-sh-shadow drop. Pocket Card Jockey Ride On yeah. is out on Switch today. Shadow Drop, as Game I mentioned, Freak. this is from Game Freak, the makers of Pokemon. Of course, they did Pocket Card Jockey on, was it 3DS or DS? The 3DS. Okay, it was on 3DS, and it was like a, it's like a horse racing game where you use cards, card-based system. A lot of people think it's a very addictive game. I've heard a lot of good stuff about it. It's just a weird, fun game, but the sequel to this game, which is the game we're talking about right Right now was an iOS only game and now it is out for Switch. So break away from that jail that is iPhone. Break away, everyone. Yes, break away from iPhone jail. I agree. Uh, my iPhone rant applies <laughs> to this as well. Yeah. Next up, Contra Operation. What's that? Galuga? I believe it's Galuga. Yeah. Which uh, also has a demo out today and is going to be launching on March 12th. Yep. It's cool to see a new 2D Contra game. I'm not in love with like the art style or anything, but I hope it plays well. Mm-hmm. 
That's all I gotta say. Like I'm well, interested. The demo is out today. It is uh, way forward. That's doing yeah. uh, development on this. They're so out my know. way. Way forward uh, is out my way. Yes, <laughs> yes, they are. Yeah, I it's... was. I, I accidentally drove by oh. their by their by office. Oh, it's a, it's a, it's actually on sale on the eShop right now. It's ten uh, percent off, thirty five ninety nine. Yeah, Pretty and old. like I, as I said, the demo is out now, so you can play it before you buy and uh, see what you think. And then the last thing, the show ender is a sequel to uh, a GameCube game. Nope. A uh, Wii game, I'm sorry. Yep. And that is <laughs> Endless Ocean Luminous, which is coming on May 12th. This is Nintendo published. This is actually the third Endless Ocean game. Okay. There's there's two on the Wii. Okay, yeah, there were two on, that's right. It was yeah. the original and, the, and then there was, it was something blue, right? Endless Ocean, something Endless- blue. Yeah. Forever blue, or I don't know, something. I mean, that, that sounds correct to <laughs> me. Uh, correct enough. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah, uh, this is Endless Ocean Luminous. Oh, I mean, it looks deep. like if you're, it looks like if you'd be into Endless Ocean games, then you would enjoy this Endless Ocean game. Not really my cup of tea, but it looks good. Oh, yeah. It's got a, a pretty big multiplayer mode. You can play with like, it says like 20 something players online, I think. Oh, really? Yeah. It showed like there's some video where you just saw like a whole bunch of divers with like their names floating above them like all going in the same area so it's not really a game in the sense that you like you have objectives that you meet like beating a boss or something like that or solving a puzzle you're just kind of exploring the ocean yeah yeah it's an exploration game as far as i know i mean it looks cool I love the graphics. Uh, it, like, it looks like a very like relaxing game. Yeah, like, that's like what the it is. Kind of, like, yeah, you just you kind can, of explore the like, ocean and relax and discover all sorts of sea creatures, both real and fake and extinct. Yeah, uh, yeah all sorts exactly. of different sea creatures that are in it, and you can do that with a large group of friends. You can just go with a huge group of friends and head off into the ocean and explore together and just enjoy some. This is this is interesting. This science. is launching in May. It's interesting because it's the only like Nintendo published game in this entire direct. Obviously, it's partner direct. But they said publisher and developer partners when they yeah. when they announced what was going to be in this direct. So it's the only. This is the only. The only <laughs> yeah, this is the only developer partner <laughs> game. <laughs> So basically, like, I want to take a couple minutes to, to say what the, you know, to kind of extrapolate what this means. Uh, cause there's no bombs dropped here. There's some cool stuff I'm like interested in checking out. I would rate this like a B just because there, there is some interesting stuff. But it's a just lot a of it, lot of stuff. Yeah. It, a lot of it is just, it's, it's just ports. Some of it's like ports of like older stuff. Like, you know, they had Star Wars Battlefront collection. Epic Mickey is a remaster of an older game. Monster Hunter Stories is a remaster of an older game. Shin Megami Tensei 5 is just a re-release of a game that, you know, already came out. You know, not, nothing like, you know, you know, groundbreaking here. And I just, I just think like the, the fact that we got this instead of like a full direct kind of to me like tells the story that this is the Switch's last year on the market. And so we're getting, you know, like, like some lower tier stuff. The, the bigger, the bigger stuff is being held back till the next Switch, till next gen launches. You know, cause yeah, we, we're, we're not getting the big stuff from like these publishers. Like we're getting Monster Hunter stories from Capcom. Capcom announced a brand new Monster Hunter game. It's not coming to Switch. Yeah. So this is, we're in it, that interesting transitionary point. We'll know it's yeah. over when they announce one last Kirby game. Yes, exactly. <laughs> as as Nintendo Kirby. does. But yeah, it's, this is clearly we're approaching the end of the Switch life cycle. There's been a lot of talk. There's been a lot of uh, developers vaguely mentioning, you know, that they hope to release on a Nintendo platform and not saying Switch specifically, meaning that they kind of know where things are headed and they're just kind of waiting for Nintendo to to do their reveal. We heavily anticipated that the Switch successor was coming out this year. There's been a lot of rumors recently now that it's going to be coming out Q1 of next year. You know, um, but this is all, all rumors, you know, like we don't it's know. It's rumors. I, that's not outside of like my expectation. I, I believe I was talking to you last week where I said March 2025 at the latest. So, I mean, that's not really unexpected on my part. And also, I don't personally, like, to be honest, I don't see much of a difference between November 2024 and March 2025. I don't. I do. It's, it's not a big deal. I, I do. It's, not, it's, not, it's, not in the it's sense a couple of, months. It's still no, within the fiscal I don't mean in that sense. I mean in a good way. Yeah. I think from a business perspective, if they launch in March, then Nintendo learned the lesson that I hope they'd learned from the Switch. Mm. One of the lessons that I hope they 
learned from the Switch, and that is that it's a good idea to put out for the early adopters and then have enough time to rally for the Christmas crowd for the families. Right, yeah, exactly. And I think that's something that Nintendo hasn't really done with their consoles until the Switch. And it's something that I I hope that they learned that lesson. And if it's delayed to Q1, then it sounds like they're trying to repeat what the Switch did, and that's a good idea in my mind. I don't know if, like, they're purposely... I I think they're just... It's just the software. I think they just want to have the software that they want to launch with, you know, ready for the launch. I think the same thing happened with the Switch. Is I think I think like Breath of the Wild just needed that extra polishing time, and they wanted to have Breath of the Wild day one for the Switch, and it worked out that way. And it's probably the same deal now. But I I think like Nintendo's also also like more okay with that because they saw how well it did it went last time, and I think that makes them more okay with pushing it out to to a March launch. Yeah, I mean I like I said I think it's better. I honestly I was thinking if they push this like last year we were looking at this year and we were thinking you know sometime between March and summer of this year is when the system's going to come out we got into this year it became clear it wasn't going to be coming out in Q1 uh, yeah. of this year and then it yeah. became like every all expectations went immediately to the holiday season and I was like I really hope they don't launch in the holiday season I just think that that means that switches are going to be hard to f- or the switch successors are going to be hard to find Right. It means that there's going to be early adopters are going to be competing with the family market. And yeah. that's, I don't think that's a good idea. I think you need to kind of get it out there. And, and I think Switch did an, an, such an amazing job, especially because starting with the Wii, Nintendo put this huge focus, or even before the Wii, I guess with the DS, Nintendo put this huge focus on like shifting more towards like casual gamers and family gamers rather than like their core audience. And I think one thing that the Switch really did well with its launch was that it focused pretty much entirely on their core audience. Uh, and and part of that yeah, was that they it, were able to... Well, I know it, once you switch, but I'm, yeah. I'm trying to say that, was, that wasn't the marquee game for the, for the Switch. Oh, they wanted Delta it Delta was the marquee game for the Switch. They were hedging their bets with that launch. They, they were hedging their bets. They were saying, okay, they let's have... They advertised Zelda more than they advertised one two switch They were he- hedging their bets with that launch. They were saying, okay, let's have something for our hardcore. Let's also have, like, a super casual game in case that we can, like, convince the, but they, the casual market to come back. But there's also things that are undeniable. They didn't. <laughs> yeah. They didn't push for video apps. Right. Uh, yeah. They didn't do everything. Yeah. All these things that would have made it more appealing to a casual audience. They didn't even touch. They right. they put their focus pretty squarely on the core audience. And then they started reaching, you know, the holiday season. And then they're like, okay, yeah, now we're gonna have a Mario game out. Yeah. Now we're gonna have like m- a greater variety of I, stuff. I, I, and yeah. now your families. Now's the time. For you to buy a switch. Yeah, I, I think I, I agree with that logic because I think by launching so early in the year, uh, you can like they can do that cadence of having a game come out pretty pretty much like every month or almost every month, and then by the time you get to holiday season, you got like a much more attractive library to sell to a casual audience than you would if you just simply launched it in the holiday season with like a couple games. Bingo. Yeah, that's and, and that's the lesson that I hoped Nintendo would learn from the Switch. So. If that rumor of the Switch successor launching in Q1 next year is true, then that's, I think that's good in my book. Like, yeah. there's, a, I'm sad that I'm not going to be playing a Switch this year if that happens, or a Switch successor this right. year, if that happens. But I think it's smart yeah. if they do that. No, I, I, yeah, I think it's smart. I think I'm with you that, like, I, I, yeah, I do want it as soon as possible, but I want I, it yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But I mean, like, people are like, Oh man, that means 2024 is just going to be all about, it was going to be all about the Switch anyway. Yeah. It, it, Switch 2 wasn't launching till like fall at the earliest, maybe like October or September. Uh, but that's, that's still like the majority of the year dominated by the old Switch. It's, it, again, it doesn't make it that much, as much of a difference as people online are like making it out to me. 2024 is still the year of the Switch, regardless of whether Switch 2 ends up coming out at the end of 2024 or not. <laughs> I'm just, you know? I'm yeah. psyched that there are so many fucking games on the Switch. Yes. And that there are so many more coming out. And yeah, there's no like big, huge, epic releases that were announced in this direct. Yeah, there's a lot of remakes and collections and stuff. Yeah, of course. But here's the truth of the matter. With every Nintendo console, there have been these drought periods 
periods where yeah, we got you nothing. like had nothing, <laughs> yeah. and and you were basically buying games that you didn't weren't even really interested in just because it's like it's a game I'm starved, and that's kind of been the Nintendo pattern for years where we go like oh it's a drought year now it's a okay year now now it's a good year but now it's a drought year again you know and yeah. that's kind of what it's been like and the Switch had like maybe one drought year. yeah it was like the second year on the market really. yeah and even that wasn't yeah. that bad no and compared to like the Wii U and N64 droughts are like insane compared comparatively you know yeah this is I, I'm happy I don't really even need anything else new it's, it's funny because like yeah this before is the like successor a, comes out there's so much it's, that I it's can funny because like to pick up th- you know this is only like a drought year compared to last year because last year was like so insane for the Switch with like a brand new Fire Emblem a brand new Pikmin a brand new Zelda you brand know new Mario. Like, brand new Mario game like yeah that, that that stuff's not hitting for the Switch this year we're not getting like that level of releases but I mean you know like we're still getting a lot of stuff it's just it's just smaller smaller tier things but still yeah. still still stuff to look and, for and actual third party support which is what we were yes. getting on the N64 and yeah, so, yeah yeah exactly exactly so yeah it's like I'm, I'm excited and you know what I'm also excited every time they announce like a 3DS remake because I am not a handheld gamer and some people see the Switch as a handheld system I don't use it as a handheld system so it never oh, registers do. that way for me I only play it with a controller on my TV I do not like playing games in a handheld position I should say. Right. It's not that I don't think those systems had good games, it's that I don't enjoy holding the system and playing on a tiny screen in, you know, a system that's designed to be easily put in your pocket so it's not very ergonomical. I'm just, I don't enjoy that process. And so there's a lot of stuff that I never got to play because they were like made for mobile and stuff. And, and franchises that I love that basically became mobile franchises you know and stuff that I was interested in but then also became mobile franchise I was interested in Fire Emblem as a series I wasn't able to get it on GameCube and on Wii because it just they didn't time right for me for like I just was broke for a lot of that time and I wasn't able to get those games and then by the time I had the money to be able to get them those games were like $200 used you know they were just unattainable and then immediately after that when I started hitting the point where it's like okay towards the end of the Wii life cycle, through the Wii U life cycle. I'm like, now I have some money I can buy games. Now Fire Emblem is a handheld only franchise. And it sucked. And I hated that. And one of the things I absolutely love about the Switch being a hybrid system is that, hey, you want to play all handheld? Now you can play not just all the handheld games you played handheld, but all the console games you weren't able to play handheld. I want to play games on console style. I can not only play all the console games that I already enjoyed playing console style, but all of the handheld games that I didn't enjoy playing that way, I can now play console style as well. Yes. And that's so when we get like three DS ports and stuff, like we have the 3DS port of uh, Monster Hunter stories, for example. When we hear about stuff like that, it's like, that's great news for me. Like, I, I want to, the yeah. 3DS had a bunch of great, like, RPGs and stuff. It's like, bring all those over. Like, give us ports of those, you know? <laughs> give us a port of, like, Radiant Historia from the DS, you know? Make a make a HD version of Radiant Historia. I would kill for that, you know? I'd love that. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm just, I'm psyched at the current state of the Switch, even without a lot of big games coming out. There's just so much to play. It's an embarrassment of riches, and there's too much to ever play for one person. Right, yeah, exactly. Yep. Uh, anything else to say about the Nintendo Direct? Nope, that's that's all I got. <laughs> well, then that is it for our show. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Again, we don't have a topic for next week. We're trying to figure something out. We were thinking about doing maybe we'll What If out. Season 2, but I, I'm kind of I'm not too keen on that right now. So maybe we'll pick something else up. There's some stuff coming up. We'll figure something out. And when that episode comes, you'll know what it is. Until then, thank you, everybody, for listening. You can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Tyson. Gifford. You can follow Will. He is at Fox Hero. You can check out our website, thetotalscreen.com. If you go there and open up a container story for any of our podcast episodes, scroll down to the last paragraphs, you're going to see all of the relevant links to our SoundCloud page, our RSS feed, everything. It's all there, so you can have access to it there. You can also subscribe to the podcast through your favorite podcast client of choice, like Apple Podcasts or Pocket Cast, and the entire backlog of our podcast, as well as additional content, including our old podcast. Everything is on our YouTube channel. So check that out as well. Thank you everybody for listening. Good night. Good night. Thank you for listening to the On Screen Podcast, the official podcast 
of the Total Screen. Visit our website at thetotalscreen.com. This podcast can be found on any major podcast client, including Pocket Cast and Apple Podcast. The entire backlog of this podcast and other content can be found on our YouTube channel.